Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I'm very privileged to have Mr. Michael Price here. He's an author. Uh, he's worked on several different television shows, including The Simpsons, I guess, back in the early 2000s. Nope. Still there. Still there, huh? Still yes. there. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, the pressing question is, before I get into uh, asking you about you, is do y'all really have a time machine? <laughs> No, I wish we did. <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, you know, when a show has been around as long as The Simpsons, 30 going on 34 seasons right now, over 700 episodes, uh, you know, you say a lot of crazy things that happen to come true. <laughs> so, no. no, but seriously, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I'm from originally from uh, central New Jersey, a little town called South Plainfield, in New Jersey. I uh, grew up just loving TV super tv kid like watch all the time uh in the pre-cable days and watch a lot of old shows old movies uh, old cartoons especially like bugs bunny cartoons and um but never thought that would be anything that you could use ex except for just for fun you know uh i went to college as a theater major uh, at a college in new jersey called montclair state and then uh went on and did graduate school for theater as well as a director at Tulane University in New Orleans, where it's uh, Mardi Gras there today. Uh, yeah. And uh, but then after that, I I just didn't quite know what to do, and uh, I I always admired comedy, and I got involved in doing improv and sketch comedy uh, when I moved back to the New York area in a, a company in New York called Gotham City Improv, and that was what sort of trained me to think in a comedy way or how to write comedy sketches um with a writing partner we decided we were going to just try to make it you know so we parked everything in a car and drove from new york to la about 30 years ago and um with a couple of contacts and uh you know we had ups and downs there we ended up not being partners anymore and i just stuck with my with the writing and eventually after a couple of years of struggle and doing all kind of crazy survival jobs uh managed to get a job on a very low budget sketch comedy show that then turned into a job on a Nickelodeon cartoon show and then um, uh, more people got to see my stuff and like me and in a couple more years of just submitting things everywhere uh, got on a uh, a legendarily now legendarily for a bad reason although I thought it was a great show uh, a sitcom on the old UPN network which was called homeboys in outer space uh it was a really fun job a lot of met a lot of great people there who are still my friends and um because of that two of the people who worked on that show were al Jean and mike reese who were uh, uh had been the showrunners of the simpsons in seasons uh three and four and had left briefly um and I, I met them on that show and then we stayed together we stayed we stayed close and they had hired me for a couple other things and eventually a couple of years later they went back to the simpsons and uh i got a job i'm sorry i got a call from al Reese, when a show I was on was about to get canceled, and I was worrying like, what am I going to do next? <laughs> and I just got a call out of the blue uh, from Al, who I had spoken to in about seven or eight months, saying, uh, "There's a spot opening up on The Simpsons if you're interested." And uh, I said, "Yes," uh, you know, super immediately. <laughs> and that was about 20 years ago, and I've been on The Simpsons ever since then. And I still remember mm -hmm. when The Simpsons came out on the Tracy Ullman show. Yes, yeah, me too, of course. And then you worked on the Simpsons movie too, right? I did. Well, you know, the, the movie was written originally, uh, the first, uh, version of the script was written by this kind of like super team, like the Avengers, you know, of the Simpsons, which was, uh, Matt Groening, Jim Brooks, uh, our two ultimate super producers, uh, Al Jean, Mike Reese, George Meyer, John Swartzwelder, John Vitti. I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out, Dave Merkin, Mike Scully, like some of these like people who had been on the show in the early years and some of them hadn't worked on the show in a little while. 
Uh, and then as, they sh as the movie went into production and it was produced more or less like a super sized version of an episode where like everything is rewritten, everything is taken apart and worked on over the course of like a year and a half, uh, they started bringing some more of us in from the show to, to work on different aspects of it. So towards the end, um, with about a year or so to go before uh, the movie came out, they brought me and uh, three of my other colleagues from the show, uh, John Frank, Tim Long and Joel Cohen. And we became this kind of like, uh, they called this the upstairs room, which is that there was a room, an actual room in our building downstairs where the big team was working on like really hashing out like all the really important moments, like the plot points and this and that. And then they got, they would get stuck on a certain area or a certain joke that just needed a funny joke but wasn't important to the plot, uh, then they would they would call us, we were sitting there like waiting by the phone, kind of like, you know, like whatever, like the rescue squad or whatever. And they'd say, okay, we need this now. So then it was our job to pitch on as many versions of this joke as we could. So like, for instance, in the movie, I just was watching the movie was on TV the other day, it was on FX, I just sort of it was popped through the channels it was on. I said, I'll watch a little bit of it again. But um, there's a part where they stop Homer and they go through his wallet or Homer goes through his wallet, I think, I forgot what, I forget what it is. I think maybe the cops go through his wallet to find his driver's license. And they needed like jokes for like, what are the other things in Homer's wallet? And so we pitched like 80 of those. Like what, what are the funny things that could be in Homer's wallet? And one of them that got in was one of the ones that we pitched, which was a picture. It's like the legendary picture of Michael Jordan, you know, doing his big air dunk, you know, his air Jordan thing, right. with Homer, Homer pacing his face over it. So that's what they chose. But we, we would send down like a page or three pages of just jokes, 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 and they would pitch that. So it was very fun. Because none of the none of the onus of like carrying an entire movie was on our shoulders. It was just our job to be to write stupid jokes. So it was fun. My favorite part of the movie was uh, Spider Pig when it was. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why that always the, cracks me up every time I see it. And in his little ditty, he sang along with it. But um, yeah, I, that was one of the ones that apparently I wasn't there, but like just kind of came up spontaneously. Well, the pig was always a big character in the movie, but then someone said oh a spider pig and they all laughed and they all started singing that song and then to their astonishment it became like yeah like you said like one of the most memorable things from the movie if not the most memorable and you've worked with uh bill burr on uh, yes. f is for family yeah so uh, the simpsons has been such a great it was such a great job such great people uh and over the years mm -hmm. i had worked on while working as a staff member on The Simpsons, which is incredibly fun, uh, I'd also wanted to try my own hand at like creating something of my own, a, a show that I could call my own. And over the years, I'd worked on various ideas and pitched some ideas to some of the networks and the whole the whole process of coming up with a, a pilot, as they say, is um, uh, kind of fraught with different obstacles along the way. So, so I, I had a couple that I had gone to and pitched to like ABC or one of them was to um, CBS um, and they liked it enough to pay me to write a script for it, but then not enough. They didn't like it once they wrote it enough to actually make it, you know, so I'd gotten close a couple of times. Uh, and every time I would do that, it, I was, I was sort of torn between um, my desire to, this is my thing, you know, uh, and then the fear of like, what if they said they want to make it, then I might have to leave the greatest job <laughs> in the history of time to do it. And who knows if it goes or not. So anyway, then finally, this thing came up with Bill Burr. And I got a call from my agent saying that this comedian, Bill Burr, was looking to develop an animated series with uh, Vince Vaughn's production company. And it was based on his childhood in the 70s. And that's all I really knew about it. Um, and so I met and I went in and met with them. I met with Bill. I'd never met Bill before. I was just sort of aware of him, his stand up a little bit, but I knew him mostly more as an actor from being on Breaking Bad, which I was a huge fan of Breaking Bad. And we had a meeting and we just had to hit it off. And our references were very similar. And I'm from the East Coast. He's from the East Coast. I'm a little bit older than him, but we had the same kind of feeling of like what it was like being a kid uh, back in the 70s and 80s. And when you were able to sort of just run around and leave the house in the morning and come back when the lights came on and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we hit it off and then he said he wanted to work on, with me on developing the, the idea because Bill had amazing, he's amazingly funny, had all these great experiences, but he didn't really know the ins and outs of what it was like to write, a, to create or write a half hour TV show or animation. So that's why they brought me in. And we just 
developed the idea and took it around and thankfully Netflix decided they wanted to make it. And then again, it came to me like, oh no, <laughs> like, it was like my dream came true, but now uh, do I have to leave The Simpsons? And The Simpsons was so nice and wonderful that they let me essentially um, go away, like, like take a sabbatical or whatever you want to call it, you know, for like five months to go off and just work on the, the first season of Episode Family. And then they told me, okay, when that's over, you can come back and your, your job will still be there. So uh, that's what I did. And then, um, then the show just kept getting picked up for second, third, fourth, fifth season. And each time I had to go back to my boss at the Simpsons and say, uh, do you mind if I do that again? <laughs> and they were great. They were wonderful. So, um, so I was able to sort of be in both worlds simultaneously. Uh, and I can't thank the Simpsons enough for giving me that opportunity to do that. So, I mean, the Simpsons has basically become a part of our culture and, yeah. you know, the, like you said, it's pretty concrete to have a job there, but it had to be freeing to be able to do something that you could kind of say is your own. Oh, it was. It was a dream come true. Uh, not only because it was something of my own, but it was something that I really, really deeply personally identified with. So um, uh, if you're familiar with the show, um, it's set in, in the early 70s in a, a suburban town. And the dad played by Bill, his name is Frank Murphy, is a guy who works at an airport as a uh, baggage manager. And um, he had a lot of thwarted dreams. He wished he could be a pilot, but he had to drop out of flight school when his wife, when his girlfriend got pregnant, had to get married, had to raise a family. So he's got a lot of issues with that, a lot of issues with the changing times. And, uh, and, and the town that he lives in was that a lot of that stuff came from was already there from Bill's idea. And then the stuff that I brought a lot of it to was sort of what the neighborhood was like, what the neighbors were like. So many of the people in this characters in the show were based on people that I grew up with, my friends, my neighbors. Uh, so it was deeply personal, really fun. So yeah, it was super, super rewarding to, a, to have a show that I could say I created the show uh, and I was the executive producer of, but even more that it was had such meaning to me. And I was able to just, every time we worked on it, I was sort of, in a way reliving my childhood or talking about my my mom or my dad or my brothers or my crazy neighbor one of the crazy neighbors on the show is this guy who's like the creepiest neighbor of all time <laughs> his name is uh goomer and he's based on a real guy i mean it, again with a comedy show and certainly with an animated comedy show everything is uh amplified comedically so this guy of course. he did creepy stuff like he would walk his dog and he'd use the dog walk as kind of a pretext to kind of like he'd be walking the dog and then like like looking at everybody's window you know you got the feeling that he was a voyeur in some way um and we show him in the show actually doing this which is what this guy actually did which is that his dog i think his wife must have been very a neat nick or something because a this real guy uh, we only we only use it in the show once but this real guy would come over and, and knock on the door to say hi to my dad and then he would say uh, do you mind if i use your bathroom like like, I think he often came over to our house just so we could use the bathroom. Oh, no. Maybe his wife didn't want him doing certain things in their bath. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, and he also would walk the dog and then he carried toilet paper and he would walk the dog, wipe the dog's butt. Oh, no. After the dog did stuff. So, so <laughs> that that's the kind of stuff that I was able to channel from my childhood and, and put in this show. I'm going to tell you what, the, the 70s were the best for me. Yeah. When I was growing up, I wanted to be Steve Austin. Yeah, sure. Uh, I still remember. I don't know why this is like one of my most vivid uh, memories of being a kid was I got my mom's uh, uh, clothes basket and I set it up in the living room and I had a bunch of, of uh, paper towel rolls and even some uh, the, the gift wrap rolls and stuff sticking out of it. And do you remember when he was fighting that? that uh the rover or whatever from the what was it like from mars or the moon or something like that okay. <laughs> i don't remember that exact episode but i i can i can picture it though <laughs> i don't know why that popped into my head but <laughs> i just wanted to talk about it uh, i don't know there's something special about the 70s for me and the older i get it seems like the more sentimental i get and I, i'll seek out like on YouTube and things like that, the old TV shows. Yeah, I, I noticed uh, with NBC, I believe their their little streaming service. They'll show the old Six Million Dollar Man and Bionic Woman, and I, sure. I think even 
Buck Rogers is on there. I think everything is on. Oh, I just God. started um, just the other day, just because again, it was like, eh, I'm gonna watch something that uh, I love, I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, and Peacock, this NBC streaming, has every episode of the Rockford Files. So I just started from the beginning yeah. of the Rockford Files. And it's so good. I remember watching it back in the day, like on Friday nights, it would be on and like, this is a great show, this is fun. But now it's like, just going back and revisiting it. And like you mentioned, Bionic Woman, like Lindsay Wagner was in the first episode of Rockford Files and she was in the second one too. So many great actors in it, so great, such a great thing. And now that I live in, I live in Los Angeles, so uh, growing up as a kid watching that kind of stuff, I would see all those images of like him Malibu and Bel Air and everything. I was like, yep. I was always picturing, like, wow, what would that be like? And now uh, I'm here, so it's always fun to watch those shows. Or I watch like Adam Twelve, or like, yeah, uh, uh, Me TV is a great channel for old guys. <laughs> but like Adam Twelve, Dragnet, and I see them driving around. Like they drive like right by where I where I go all the time now. They drive down streets like Lancashire Boulevard, or Ventura Boulevard, and Studio City. I was like, oh, I recognize that place. So anyway, you're right. I, I just love watching all that old stuff and. I can't get enough of it. I'm still in love with Linda Carter. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> and and uh, what, Starsky and Hutch, another one of sure, my favorites yeah. from back yeah. in the day. Uh, you know, yeah. The weekends, I'd go stay at my grandparents and we, we watched uh, Hee Haw. And that was the, I don't sure. know why I loved that show, but, you know, and then the 80s rolled around. We had the Dukes of Hazard and, incredible yeah. hulk and all that yeah it was great i don't really watch a whole lot of tv anymore to be honest mm -hmm. with you i mean i i still watch cartoons and stuff like you know from yeah. back in the day uh, i love the office and a few other things that are a little more modern yeah. but yeah. uh i don't know tv is just not the same to me anymore it doesn't have the same yeah, hear entertainment value yeah. that it used to well, it's interesting, too, because there's so much available now. Like everyone talks about this, like when you go on Netflix, there's like whatever it's called, Netflix fatigue, where like you flip through a million things and you don't know it. And there's something to be said, I think, maybe because it's of, I'm of, of that age, you know, it seems like we're around the same age of from being back then, where you just put, you turn the thing on and like, if something was on that you liked, you watched it. Like you didn't have to go through 9,000 choices. Yeah. You know, so there's something about like, I'm going to go watch Rockford Files again. Or, or like, like I said, there's a, I don't know if you get me TV, but there's a, you know, there, there, there are different channels around the country, but it's called me TV and it just shows old stuff uh, linearly, like just on regular TV. Um, and there's also a streamer called Pluto, which yeah, is just that. old, 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 old stuff like Johnny Carson, everything mm -hmm. old. And like, but that's, that's real linear in that, like, you can't pause it. Like, it's not even like, it's, it just, it just comes on like, like, like it used to be. And there's something that makes it so much easier, more effortless. Like, I'm just going to watch something like, I have to like make a big decision or, you know, so I think that might be part of it. The other thing I was noticing too, was watching these Rockfords is, uh, and as much as I love, like the shows I love to watch now, uh, aside from like my own stuff for the Simpsons or whatever, uh are like the bingeable type shows where like like for instance like better call saul is getting ready to come back on soon i love that show i do I love, like, like that Breaking Bad. i love the sopranos uh um i love those kinds of shows where it's like the story keeps going and you want to watch the next one watch the next one but then i was watching rockford and like there were 22 episodes a year and every week like he got through he went through such hell like he was always getting beat up he was always like getting chased and it was like, when you watch them, I watched like two or three in a row. I was like, man, you could not, those shows were not made to be watched in that, in that way. Like they were not made to be watched in a binge way mm -hmm. because there's no, no way a real person could ever live that life. Like they're just meant to be watched once a week, maybe once a week. Cause like back then, of course, as you recall, there were no VCRs. If you missed it, you missed it. So like maybe in, on the, and I loved Rockford Files. Any show I loved, I wasn't home every Friday night, so I would maybe see out of 22 episodes, maybe maybe 11 or 12, you know, and like, all right, what's Rockford up to this week? But it wasn't this kind of thing where, like, uh, you know, I actually texted this to Bill Burr the other day because I was like, man, if you binge this thing, you're seeing like, man, that Jim Rockford's had a hell of a bad, bad couple of days, you know? So it's like, it's just, it's just a different experience, you know, it's a different thing where you're less invested in it. Uh, I mean, uh, it's interesting because uh, Simpsons is a show that certainly has um, benefited from, uh, and in a way, I don't know, it's, I don't know uh, 
well, like having a fan base of like super people super invested in it, mm -hmm. you know, who who love it, who hate it, who love the old episodes, who maybe don't like the new ones so much, but still watch it, still comment about it, memeing and everything. And it just seemed like in those days, uh, if you liked the show, maybe you had your 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 friends or your family you would talk about it, but there wasn't a place where you could just go and talk to the whole world about it or be chimed in. Like you just watched it, and if you didn't like it, then you didn't watch it. You know, like it just seemed like a different. It was just a different way of experiencing things back though, back in those old days. If if I remember, we used to get TV guide like every Saturday. Sure. And so I'd I'd look through the whole week, pick out what I wanted to watch, knew what time I needed to be home. So I could go play the ball game or whatever we wanted to do, ride our bikes, what have you. And then oh, I gotta get home because such and such is coming on. Now Saturday mornings, I was gonna be glued to the TV from six o'clock until like oh, yeah. twelve or one. Oh yeah. Never, never missed a Saturday of watching cartoons, and uh, it was uh, my, there was a bunch of westerns that came on Saturday that I liked, uh, uh, Alias Smith and Jones, and sure, you know, yeah. things like that. And you know, some of our audience is like, "What? What the <laughs> heck is that?" I did. I love those shows. I did too. And, I liked every. I mean, I liked everything. I, I'm not kidding to say that. Like, I I just spent so many hours in front of a tv when i was a kid it was insane i had a, my younger yeah. brother was a sports guy I liked to play a lot of sports and everything and um he would he would tease me or mock me because he'd say like come on let's go outside and play and i'd be like no no there's a really great episode of uh you know f troop on or something <laughs> right he, he'd be like you jerk and he'd call me his nickname for me was television eyes because he'd go television eyes like <laughs> <laughs> but like here i am i'm, I'm working in tv now uh -huh. I, live in, I live in la so it worked out well and there's something about the reruns i guess it's that you even though you've seen it before there you don't have that i guess disappointment from watching it as you might from shows now um you know i i I had get, ended up sick and and I was flipping through channels and got to uh, the office, okay, and I started watching it and I fell in love with it and finished off all nine seasons and then I watched it again and I watched it again and I watched it again and I watched like Did you watch anything yeah. else and there was actually a study done about that where people that have certain mental disorders um like myself um it's like you 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 don't get that uh, anxiety as much when you watch something that you that you know because i mean i watch sure. beverly hillbillies all the time i watched <laughs> good times all the time sure. uh, i mean you name it i've I've watched them over and over and over again, and it's hard for me to get into newer shows unless it's just something I really, really want to watch, which yeah. to be honest with you, we got rid of cable. Um, I have a, a few streaming, uh, you know, I gotta say there's just not too much that I want to watch because it's yeah. not entertainment anymore. And I don't want somebody preaching at me, just entertain me. I just want right. to laugh or, sure. you know, enjoy an adventure or something. And Right. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm picky about the streaming services that I get. Sure, sure, I get that. One thing I, I you mentioned about watching stuff uh, a lot of times is that that's the thing that was really surprising to me was that, um, uh, well, I came, I'm, I'm coming from a show like The Simpsons, which has been watched over and over and analyzed and it's been on for 30 years. But uh, when I when Episode Family first started coming on Netflix a few years ago, I would go out and look at social media and Twitter and stuff and see people talking about how they just watched it for the seventh or eighth time. And mm -hmm. I was astounded by that. Astounded. Like, I still can't believe it. Like people will talk about it, like they, they watch it every day, whatever. And we've only made, we, we finished our, our, our last, this most recent season, season five that just came out in uh, November was our final season. So all told we made uh, 44 episodes. Um, and but people talk about how they watch it every day or whatever so it's like i'm very happy about that but it's really amazing to me to to, to think that there's that kind of a viewing experience going on yeah i mean with the simpsons i never miss the simpsons i've seen every tree house of terror and you know everything you can imagine i've seen it 
I have to admit, I haven't seen it in the last couple of years. I said we got rid of cable and all that, so I haven't mm -hmm. been able to watch it. But well, do you get Disney Plus? Um, yes, but I'll tell you, my my grandson takes it over and watches Puppy Dog Pals. He would watch it all day long. <laughs> well, when he goes to bed or whatever, you know, uh, every episode, every season of Simpsons up until his most recent one is on is on Disney Plus now. I'm okay. Uh, well, now I know that I'm going to watch it. And I will say, uh, not to uh, whatever, uh, toot our own horn, but I feel like this last year, um, these last couple of seasons have been really, really strong. Um, we did a great episode, two part episode that was on earlier in this year that was sort of our parody of uh, Fargo type TV shows like the Coen Brothers streaming dramas. And um, there was a great one just on Fox uh, on Sunday night that was a uh, an adventure story with Homer and Marge getting lost in the wilderness, uh, a la that TV show Naked and Afraid. Um, I think we're really taking some interesting uh, chances with stuff and really feels like, to me, it feels like these last couple of seasons and this season particularly has been really, really strong and we've got some really great episodes coming up. So you, anyone out there who still has cable or or even regular, I don't know, can, is this broadcast TV even exist anymore? Can you just like turn a TV on and pull down a signal? You know, I, I believe they have new antennas that pick up the, the it's all digital now. It used right, to be, yeah. you know, airwaves. And I still remember getting up and having to change the little things on the sure. back of the TV from UHF to VHF and all that. But, uh, but I, I mean, I don't even have the antenna. Yeah. We, well, we, we do have the few streaming services and even that we've kind of cut a lot out of, but well, there's um, so many of them and they cost so much. Like, I think, I think they're all waiting. Uh, from what I, from what little I know from reading about it out here is that like every, every one of these studios launched their own service. So there's like HBO mm -hmm. max, which is Warner brothers is paramount. Peacock yep. is NBC universal Disney, um, whatever. And that they're all waiting either for them. One of them for like, it's like a clash of, titans where they're waiting for some of them to die or eventually get absorbed into each other so it'll eventually be one big in a couple of years it'll probably be one big bundle that you pay end up paying as much as you pay now for cable <laughs> you'll pay for all these things pretty much yeah, yeah. well I, I did watch f is for family and or f for family i forgot but f um yeah. and um I enjoyed that. Um, I the the homeboys in space. I didn't. I have to admit, I didn't see that's that right. one. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's why it only lasted seventeen episodes. So don't worry about that. But I did see the list of the shows, and there were several on, on there that I I have watched. Um, but I'm getting away from that for a moment, I did want to ask you a question before I forget. Sure. You kind of have to keep up with pop culture and things like that when you're doing those shows, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially, uh, uh, Simpsons, which is, um, which is now, like I said, we're, we're now writing episodes that will be in our season 34, which it's is crazy. insane. It's insane. Um, and upwards of 700 and we're in the back 700s now we're like up to episode 760 or something like that, which is also insane. So, but the lifeblood of the show, aside, aside from the, the relationships of all the funny characters of Homer and Marge and Bart and everybody is, is I feel to be um, satirizing or talking about what's going on in the world now, you know? And so I actually wrote an episode that was on earlier uh, this year. I'm sorry. It was on about a year ago um, where this is getting off into a little bit of a tangent, but that um, it was about it was about Homer and it was based on a thing we'd heard about a guy who um, had got a hold of all these robot defunct robot bears from Chuck E. Cheese's, you know, and, and, and re, re, retooled them and put, made them again and everything because he had nostalgia for Chuck E. Cheese. And so we had Homer do that. And but in the version of the show, Homer and when he was in high school, worked at a place like that and 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 helped maintain the the robot bears at this place called Razzle Dazzles. And uh, so we we did like a flashback to Homer being a teenager. But because the show is now taking place now in 2022 or 2021 and Homer's around 40. So when Homer was 15, that was 25 years ago. So that was like 1995 or 96, you know, so we had Homer as a teenager living in the early 90s. 
and he had like a digital underground poster on his wall and he was into hip hop and you know and rollerblading and everything and people went nuts they 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 went insane hating it you know some did uh because no homer is homer will always be there's there's episodes from the early episodes early seasons of the show where uh sorry mike i'm glaring here where uh homer um and marge were high school kids in the 70s and they went to see star wars and all that stuff and that made sense when the show came out in 1990 but now the show is out in 2021 uh, that version of homer wasn't in high school in the set that if, if 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 the show had kept going that way that version of homer would be in the 60s now you know so anyway uh i feel and a lot of us feel on the show like the show is always kind of like on this mobius strip of like time moving forward you know every episode takes place now in the year 2021 or 2022 and those are the references so bart bart simpson is a 10 year old who lives who in, according to the bart of today would have born been born in 2011 or 2012 so uh people don't like that people say like the show it should have ended years ago <laughs> so that's fine that's that's the way they believe but i think for us like we feel like the show is kind of like a, a organism that keeps moving forward and, and living in, the, in the, living in the moment so we like you said we have to we stay current on try to stay current on what's going on in the, out there in the world and, and use the show as a vehicle to have some fun or make make a point or satirize what the world is we live in now. I think if we kept making jokes about referencing things from the 70s, well, that was if the family did that, but uh, you know, it wouldn't, that's, there's no way the show would still be around now. It would be like if Saturday Night Live first came on in 1975, if like people expected Saturday Night Live to just keep making Gerald Ford jokes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's oh my, my little, God. My little I, soapbox about The Simpsons. I still remember having to sneak into the room to to watch Saturday Night Live because I wasn't allowed to watch that when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, we had a funny experience where I was I come from a Catholic family, uh Irish Catholic, where you don't talk about things that make that are that are uh upsetting or whatever you know you just sort of ignore it you know <laughs> so when I was a kid same thing like we would sneak in to watch it or if we happened to be watching it with my parents and they did like a sex joke or something and here I am whatever 13 or something watching it everyone in our, everyone in the house would just be super like don't say anything <laughs> don't laugh like my brothers and I we would on purpose not laugh at we we trained ourselves not to laugh at anything that was too dirty because then we didn't want our parents to know that we we knew what that stuff was. <laughs> you don't want to give uh, yourself away. <laughs> no, right. So then so now now flash forward, you know, 40 years later, or whatever. I have a son now, he's in his 20s, but um we'd be watching that stuff. And now now I'm the now I'm the dad and he's the kid, and that kind of stuff happens. And again, yeah. I'm like <laughs> we just do it all over again, except now I'm the dad. So anyway. Gosh, man. Not a healthy way, not a healthy way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the sneaky things we did as kids right right yeah it's like when kiss came out and oh my my mother was like oh there's no way my son's gonna listen to that band and i used to sneak around the little store around the corner with my 25 cents to buy the bubblegum cards had got the whole collection my mom found it and she went ballistic threw them all away and they're like <laughs> worth 60 bucks now or something like that <laughs> wow yeah yeah well my mom didn't want me to go see monty python and the life of brian mm -hmm. because it made fun of jesus so uh, my brother and i were gonna go we're, we were we're saying mom we're going to the movies what are you gonna go see uh that monty python movie you are not going to see that you are not going to that and we were like we were we were like practically adults at the time and then she browbeat us and we i forget we saw something else but like yeah so oh my can't god in front of jesus greece was controversial controversial when we were kids okay <laughs> right, so <yeah. laughs> oh my god. but uh you know back to talking about all the different shows that you're on yeah how, how do you change your creative way of thinking because you can't do the same thing on F is for family as you can on the Simpsons or any of these other shows. I mean, how do you do uh, that? Yeah. Well, you just sort of put yourself in the head of a, in the, in the mind frame of what the particular show is about, right? You're right. Like F is for family was a show that was uh, unrated. Well, Netflix is, they don't really have ratings on Netflix, but, um, but we were free to, 
do or show just about anything. In fact, Netflix, is, when we first started, it was encouraging us like, do whatever you want, just go crazy, you know, because they're, you know, a part of the way that they set themselves apart from uh, other things. So, uh, and The Simpsons, we can't do that. So I just, it's not that hard to do, just sort of put myself in a different frame of mind. Like, okay, I'm thinking Simpsons today. I'm thinking this today, you know, and, and uh, luckily it's not like a live show or anything. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can sort of say like we can pitch something that wouldn't be that we'll pitch some things on The Simpsons all the time that like you sort of say it just as a joke, but like there's no way that could ever be really done, you know, but so we were able to sort of filter things out. And, well, you you have to censor yourself. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. You're st we're still on, even though, you know, like I said, there's no broadcast TV anymore, but it's still a network. So The Simpsons is still on the Fox network, which is and we're aware that uh you know a lot of kids watch the show too like a lot of a lot of young kids watch the simpsons so there's certain things that we won't say or do but we'll but on that's family we could do just about anything i was a young father when simpsons started and you know here's my daughter's like what almost 30 and uh well i take that back because it they they started what 34 years ago you said uh the show first came on the first episode of the actual show was 1989 yeah so we're, we're writing season 34 season 33 is on tv right now golly man yeah because uh, uh remember my wife and i was talking about how the simpsons were on uh tracy ullman and i think i was in high school when that was going on right yeah 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 the time um, just flies man I know. <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, I still can't believe it that uh, I've been here working on the show for for twenty years. It's it's crazy. Jeez, you know, it, it, kids growing up. And it's my youngest one is twenty five, and then I've got three grandkids, and it, <laughs> it just it it boggles the mind. You've been on the show for twenty years, and it's yeah. I bet it just seems like it just flew by. It does. It does. Uh, partly too, because uh, most shows will have like a seasonal feeling to them where um, like your traditional network TV show will start working on the new season, like sometime in like June or something. Mm -hmm. And then you make all your episodes. And if you get to do a full season, which not many shows do that anymore, but you, then you're done by like March, let's say. And then you have what's called a hiatus of like two or three months. Then you come back and you go, okay, now we're starting the next season. Uh, but the nature of animation is that the shows are always being in process of being worked on in one way or another. And so we have no real, there's never like an end of the season thing for us. It's never like, okay, that's it. See you in three months. Uh, we're always, we're always working. So like we, we get time off, we were able to take vacations and stuff like that. But um, but like yeah one one season just come just kind of morphs into the next so there's never that kind of delineation of like okay this is season one this is season two like an officer family the way that show was made was that um we would make all the episodes and then they'd come out and then and then we'd wait a couple of months to hear if we're going to get get do more and then make more so that was a real like that sometimes a year would go by in between working on the seasons more than a year but at simpsons it's like it's all just one big ocean of time you know yeah. so i'll be like i'll be like oh we did that show that episode was blah, blah, blah. that was like what like four years ago and you look it up no it was eight years ago you know that kind of thing yeah it was, must be nice that you don't have to to look at it in a particular order to keep up with what's going on no that's true that's very true yeah that's that's one of the i think that's people ask sometimes like what what is the what are some of the reasons why the simpsons is still able to be around you know for so long and i think part of it is the genius and I wasn't there when it started, of course, but the way that it, it the whole setup of it is uh, a genius thing where, you know, the characters never age. Um, although I did say like, we slowly slide, slide the time scale forward, but um, Bart will always be 10 and, and you know, like that. And, um, and, uh, and that every, every episode is more or less in a self-contained own little mini universe. It's a little mini movie in a way. And that, uh, at the end of the episode, everything is more or less back to the way it was at the beginning. You know, we, we have some continuity, like a slight bit of continuity sometimes, like a character, like some characters have died. Right. Uh, Maud Flanders died. So, but then she comes back as ghosts and flashbacks and things like that too. But aside from that, 
it's this every episode is its own and you could you could conceivably watch a season 30 episode and a season three episode next to each other and it would hopefully feel like the same show well, and you had what sideshow bob to sideshow mel and right, right. So, yeah i mean yeah there has to be a consistency there but for the most part you can watch simpsons in any order you want right not like breaking bad you have to watch uh, that in a certain order or or the office although, oh the office yeah although i would say like i know some people now um who are younger uh who are watching better call saul but have never seen breaking bad and to me that's like wow that's wild you know but like to me it's like you can't you can't do it that way but but yet here they are so i'm i'm ready for the next season of uh better call saul by the I way, can't wait. Oh, I, can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait i mean april can't come soon enough so uh, I don't know. There's something about those shows, man. Uh, I have to watch them over and over and over again. So but good. getting away from all that, what do you like to do outside of all this craziness? Well, you know, I uh, the only thing I really follow, the only, and it's a little rough night now because they're going through their own uh, turmoil, is baseball. I love baseball. I love the New York Mets. That's my my team I grew up with, rooting for at, back east. And uh, so, and my son who grew up here in LA, uh, I methodically uh, made sure he would be a Mets fan, <laughs> which he is, even though he's living in a city where the Dodgers, you know, have been to the World Series like five times in the last six years. Right. But, uh, 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 he like his, his LA team are the Angels um, and he likes the Padres too. But um, yeah, baseball and, and just going to the movies or, I mean, it's not, it's been hard to go to the movies lately, but it's getting a little bit better. I went the other day to uh, here in LA, I think everywhere around the world, around the country at least, they're really re-releasing The Godfather. Oh they yeah. Did, they did a huge restoration of it, digital restoration of it, and it's the 50th anniversary of The Godfather. So I went to see it the other day at a theater here in uh, Burbank. It was beautiful. And I've seen, that's a movie I've seen, like you talk about watching stuff over and over again. I must've seen The Godfather either in its entirety or like that thing where you're just flipping around and it comes on and it's on suddenly it's on TNT or something and yep. it's halfway through up. Oh, I'm just going to watch the rest of it now like that. So I've seen, I've seen it either in its entirety or bits and pieces of it probably 20 times, but um, uh, it was still great to see it on a big screen. So I like to do that or go to the actual, the legitimate theater. Cause I come from an acting and theater background. So uh, whenever I can here in LA or, or occasionally when I go back East to visit my, family i'll go to new york just just take like a weekend in new york city and go to see as many you know shows on broadway as i can oh, of course yeah i'm with you godfather or godfather part two comes on i gotta watch it godfather three i'll watch but i'm yeah. not a big fan i have a uh, big memory i have a really strong memory of going to see that when it came out like it was came out on like christmas day or something of 1990 or so and i was so excited for it and then i was like oh boy <laughs> <laughs> that was how I felt with uh, when uh, Star Wars, the Star Wars uh, oh my God. First came out. But um, yeah, but anyway, but Godfather wanted to unbelievable. Goodfellas is another one like that. Good oh, movie. yeah. Any of those uh, usual suspects, sure. uh, Scarface, uh, was it Carlito's Way, all those, man. Yeah, yeah. I could watch those over and over again. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on Star Wars because uh, I mean I was a little kid when uh, the first one came out, and and then when uh, Return of the Jedi came out, I was I was a teenager, but uh, you know the, then many years later the sequels came out, and I was kind of like, well, you know, but then when the the sequels came out, uh, I have a new love for the prequels. <laughs> Well, it's interesting to watch because, you know, I've had a chance to do some work in the Star Wars uh, world in a tangential way, which is I've, I've worked on these things with Lego, Lego Star Wars shows, which have been super fun because, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I, I, I saw the first one, you know, uh, I guess I'm a couple years older than you, but um, yeah, I went to see the Empire Strikes Back on the first night I could. And, and, and that was before, like, spoilers you know so I, I i was not ready for the whole big reveal the darth vader reveal i like was literally like oh, what holy oh my god you know lost my lost everything over it love turn of the jedi was the first one where i was like i like it it's pretty great but then all the ewok stuff kind of 
made me feel a little e you know but yeah um, i was that way i did not like the ewoks yeah they, they, they leaned a little bit too heavy in the ewoks i felt but um that's one one reason i mean they they made those special editions that came out like now in the late 90s now mm -hmm. i can't believe that's 25 years ago but um uh for, and generally i think they're eh but like the the, the special edition of return of the jedi i, I they, to me they fixed the ending where uh if you've seen it they they really dial down the ewok stuff at the end of the the dancing around singing that song and everything so that i was like all right they they did a good job with that but um anyway i had a chance to do some work with star wars and so uh and a lot of the stuff that i did in these early lego shows i did was was taking taking shots at the prequels and and like uh, the one one of the shows I did was was about um, uh, it was a thing kind of a recap of of um, the Phantom Menace where it, it, wait, wait, the setup of it is is that like it's after all the other stuff happened at Return of the Jedi and they're all hanging out together and um, and Luke Skywalker asks C3PO um, tell us like tell us what it was like what was what were the Clone Wars like you know and he's like well I'll tell you and he starts to talk and he goes it was a very exciting thing. And then uh, and they go, uh huh? And then he goes, the taxation of trade routes was being debated, and they all start falling asleep. You know, so I mean, that's how I felt. But then it's interesting that you say because, like, it's all generational. Because like I would see people respond to these things, uh, who they were kids when Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones or the other, the other one came out. That's their Star Wars, you know. So they love those movies, and they they don't think they're terrible at all. They they really get into those. And so that's what's happening now. A lot of the stuff that's even going on in these new these new batches of these shows, which are also on Disney Plus, if your grandson uh, lets you watch. That's uh, like puppy dog pals. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mandalorian and Boba Fett, you know, are, are and some of the other things are are not rehabilitating, but taking some of the stuff from these characters from that Clone Wars era and putting them in. And people love that stuff. So, uh, and uh, yeah, I got equally super excited when the new ones came out. The, the last three and some of those i like better than others uh i thought rogue one was the best of all you know i did enjoy that batch the most recent ones that's that's the one i really like the best i was excited for solo but very disappointed with it and rogue one i really enjoyed i have a friend of mine he's like a bigger nut with star wars than i am he he hates all of them all the new ones and i'm like i thought rogue one was good and i like the fact that you know they they died heroes you know yeah, he didn't like it. I'm like, come, come on, man, come on. Uh, but I, I remember saw Rogue One in a big theater uh, because I did some work with Lego and Star Wars. I got invited to like a kind of a previewy thing of it. With, I mean, granted, it was with people who all worked at Lucasfilm or somehow knew people there, so it's not a an unbiased audience. But um, it was really exciting. With that that second to last scene when Darth Vader shows up and just kicks ass, like people went insane. Like that to me, and I saw someone just tweeted this the other day, like that's the greatest Darth Vader's ever been better than in that moment when he shows up on that on that ship and he's working the lightsaber and he's just throwing guys around. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, my, I will say my grandkids do like all those Lego movies. I've seen the, the Star Wars ones, uh, the Batman and all that stuff. And, and uh, that's got to be a big change because most of the stuff you do is kind of more adult oriented type stuff. And now you yeah. got to do kid stuff, but that was still really, going to be fun. Right. That was really fun because the, the Star Wars ones that I did were on purpose, at least from my point of view, um, like visuals of it are, are kit kids can get into and a lot of the characters like the first one i wrote was called the padawan menace and like the main characters were all kids in it and they were these kids who were like on a field trip to uh the galactic senate during the clone wars era um and anyway uh but but at the same time coming from a simpsons point of view and also looking at like a lot of those movies the other shows were kind of inspired too by the point of view of if you've seen any of the robot chicken uh parodies of star wars yes <laughs> um, super funny super super funny but that kind of same thing of like so it's hopefully if you're watching it like if you're an eight-year-old or nine-year-old watching it you just get off on like enjoying oh this is fun and spaceships and everything and all the star wars characters but at the same time there were a lot plenty of jokes aimed at the, the adults watching it who were familiar with the movies and little references mm -hmm. to do little jokes here and there about 
you know deep cut references to the movies and stuff so that was super fun to do those i did yeah. notice in some of those lego movies that the the jokes would go over the kids heads but the adults would be like i get what they're talking about yeah but it even goes back to like me as a kid watching like bugs bunny cartoons oh which, yeah which were made like for a general audience like they they were not made for kids i mean they were they would be a bugs bunny cartoon back in the day would be like in front of a humphrey bogart movie or something you know so uh similar thing like the animation is slapsticky and fun but the references and were all like like over a kid's head so i was definitely inspired by all that oh man i could sit here and talk about those cartoons all day long the bugs bunny woody woodpecker and not man i i could i love all that stuff and i i've noticed i think hbo is starting to bring some of those old cartoons back yeah and uh, I will watch those when they pop up. Yeah, HBO Max, their streaming service, I think, has most of the old Looney Tunes cartoons on there. And they've made some new ones, too, that I've seen a couple of those that are they're pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're good, but there's none like the old ones for me. No, but no I, there's you nothing know, like the old ones. That's I'm true. an old fart, and I just like the old stuff anyway. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> I, I enjoy it all. Um, I was a lot more into pop culture when I was younger. Um, now, you know, being grandpa and everything, my, my extent is puppy dog <laughs> and Paw Patrol. I forgot Paw Patrol. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. If, if ever, hopefully someday I'll have grandkids. So I'll be able to experience that. I'm trying to get him to watch those older cartoons so I, I can go back and relive those days myself and, you know, <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, any plans for anything else that you want to do on your own? Well, I'm always like in the in the on the lookout for something new, and uh, you know, meanwhile, The Simpsons just continues to keep moving on, and um, there's a couple of things that are I'm thinking about that would be fun to do, but nothing. I mean, this business is so crazy that, uh, that sometimes you may come up with an idea for a thing and tell somebody about it, and they go, "Oh my, that that's great, yeah," and then maybe like. It takes like five years <laughs> for it to come out. Mm -hmm. I was just watching the SAG Awards the other night, um, which I, I like watching award shows, but there was somebody got an award for a movie. I can't remember which one it was. It might've been the one that Jess, Jessica Chastain about Tammy Faye Baker. And she said, she said, I've been working on getting this movie made for 10 years. Wow. And I was like, that's about right. <laughs> but it takes a long time. So just as a way of saying, like I've had some thoughts about things. I've worked on some stuff that, um may 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 come to something someday or may not you never know but that's why i'll I keep thank god for the simpsons and I'm, hopefully the simpsons will keep keep moving forward and i guess you have to be careful who you tell it to because i know a buddy of mine he had been working with a group to get a show done and they decided no we're not going to do it and then turn around a few years later and you see somebody else doing that show that he had talked about doing it was, it was one of those yeah. you know reality shows but still sure yeah there's a lot of a lot of instances of that uh, i've had one or two things like that happen where i had the idea and i and i could i wouldn't i don't think it was like somebody stole the idea but it's just you know a lot of people there's a lot of people out here with a lot of ideas you know so whoever whoever gets theirs out there first um gets gets it but i i believe there's probably some people stealing stuff too so well, yeah, of course. be careful well that's uh, unfortunately the world we live in. Yeah. But if you had some advice to give somebody out there that may be aspiring to do the same thing that you do, what, what would you tell them? Boy, I would say really know what you want to do. Be really passionate about it. Practice at it. You know, if you want to be a writer, write as much as you can, you know, even like find it. If it's a movie, let's say, or if it's a TV show, I, I know more about TV shows than movies. So, Let's say there's a show you really like uh, that's on now, or an older show. And like study it and and learn what it, learn what made it work, and maybe maybe for the first thing to do, instead of writing your own original story about your own life, like decide like pretend that you're on the staff of uh, The Simpsons or or any show really. Uh, the other show I really love. I don't know if you've seen it, it's on FX called What We Do in the Shadows. It's about oh my vampires. god, I love that show. I love that show. That's my favorite comedy show. So like. Take 
and that's that's a show that has kind of episodic structure you know has has kind of like a arc but not that much but decide like if let's say you really love that show and say you know for the next month i'm a writer on on this i'm going to write an episode of that you know and like teach yourself like learn learn what how the stories work on that you know like do it practice it that way do it a couple of times and then then start working on your own stuff keep it going but then really if you're going to tr try to really make something happen the only thing I could say from my my own experience is that I literally had nothing else I could do. Like to me, it was kind of like an all or nothing. Like I was all in. You know, when I came out here yeah. from New York to LA, um, uh, I was kind of like, I'm either gonna it's either gonna happen or it's not. You know, but there's no to borrow a, a line from uh, Breaking Bad, no half measures. So like I I went all right. in, and it was like I'm gonna make this happen. If it doesn't, then at least I could say I tried. But but if, if, if you have a feeling of like, well, I'll either be a writer or I'll be a, whatever, a, a lawyer or whatever, then, then the odds are you might not, like, yeah, to me, it was like, it helped that I had literally nothing else. Like, if I didn't make this, I don't know what I was going to do. So I'm, I'm glad that it worked out. And my, my dad always told me that if I didn't finish school and, and get a good education, that I was going to be a ditch digger one day and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Well, I, I used to work for the water and the sewer department. If that tells you anything. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Price. I really appreciate you coming on. It has really been an honor. And uh, anytime you want to have talk about those old cartoons or uh, Star uh, Wars. I'd be out. I'd love to. Anytime you want to have me back to talk about that, we'll just spend an hour talking about Looney Tunes. I, I've uh, got some, you, I'm sorry. I've, I okay. got some, uh, great bloopers that are still in the star Wars movies. We could talk about too, by the way. Sure. Anytime I'd be up <laughs> talking about star Wars anytime. <laughs> Thank but, you. Uh, you're always welcome to come back. And for all of you out there, if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe. For those of you who are regular, thank you for your support. If it weren't for you, we couldn't do what we do. And so until the next one, everyone, please take care, be kind to one another, God bless, and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.